What's good, Chaotic Nation? It is your boy Chaos here, and I'm bringing you a little bit different of a video today. Um, it's a really weird, uh, interesting thing that a lot of YouTubers have done in the past. Um, it's a tag video where one creator makes a video and they tag a few other creators to make the same video, giving their thoughts and their opinions on the questions that they answer in the video they create. So I, I'm not quite sure how this one got started. Something within the ABL, I think, uh, which is in the Amateur Battle League, which is a draft league that I very much follow. And a lot of my friends, uh, close friends who make content are a part of. Um, I actually was tagged by Soy Salamonster, so big shout out to him. Thank you for thinking of me when doing your own video. I really do appreciate it, my guy. Uh, if you want to check him out, I'm going to leave his link to his video in the description down below. Fair warning, it is in Spanish, but he does have subtitles, so it is very helpful for that. Um, you definitely go check it out. It's always a great guy. Um, definitely worth your time, and uh, just he's a cool guy in general. Uh, but let's get into this video. Uh, so I was tagged to do this video. I have three questions I have to answer, so I'm going to be taking them in order. And I have a little sticky note here that has all my information on it for what I need to answer. So let's just jump right into it. Oh, but before we do that though, I do want to say if you guys uh, like this kind of idea, feel free to hit that like button if you want to subscribe, if you want to see more content, feel free. Um, but also this video is going to be literally just me talking to you guys. I'm not going to have anything fancy pop up on the screen at all. Um, so enjoy Charmander, squirt on Bulbasaur, Charmander, if you want. <laughs> but I'm just going to go through my thoughts on this um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So I hope you guys are excited. And feel free, by the way, if you I do not tag you at the end of this video. Feel free to do this video yourself. Please tweet it to me that you have done it. Send it to me a DM on Discord. Some way, shape, or form, get me a link to the video. I would love to watch it. I would love to see your team. If you don't make content, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to read it. Um, and I really hope you would take the time to answer these questions. I will also leave the questions in the description so you can check those out there just in case you missed them. So we're starting out with number one. Um, if Pokemon was real, um, which town or city would I be a part, would I be from? Um, so this is very difficult for me. I am a big Kanto fan. I love Generation 1, Generation 3, and especially the new remakes in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and Generation 7. Um, Kanto is my home turf. It was my first ever game when I played Fire Red Leaf Green. So... It's kind of hard for me not to pick Kanto, but I'm not going to, um, essentially, I'm going to go with um, a lesser known uh, favorite region of mine, which is the Aura region, which is from Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out those games, definitely go check them out. They're very awesome, fun games built around Shadow Pokemon, which you may have seen in the Pokemon Go events, but they are really cool regions, uh, focusing on double battles, and I love, 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 love those games. They're my favorite games of all time, so I would definitely recommend them to you. But I feel like my city in that game has to be Agate Village. Now, Agate Village is this town that's basically built around this giant tree. Um, there has a relic in it that supposedly contains man not Manaphy, supposedly contains Celebi. Um, it's a purification chamber for Shadow Pokemon. It's a place you travel to unless you're playing XD and you have the Purify Chamber. You travel there and you purify your Shadow Pokemon and they become regular Pokemon again. So I feel like I would live somewhere in that town, maybe um, behind the big tree where Egan and uh, Yule live, or maybe even on past the daycare a little bit down that way. Um, just somewhere in that town, I feel like that would be me. I thought about Fennec City as well, which is this nice oasis in the middle of the desert, has a call of singing and stuff. Definitely, I would regularly visit that place, but I probably would live in a gate just because I like the quiet life. That's kind of me. I don't like to be in the big city. Um, I live in a small town. I grew up in a small town. Um, the biggest city for me doesn't even compare with some of the big cities that you see. So uh, I'm very much a small rural kind of guy. Um, so that would definitely be where I would live. Uh, if you want something from the main series game, I would probably say Verdian City is the closest uh, place that would make sense to me. Um, it's Kanto. Uh, it's right next to Pallet Town, which would be the Professor, which uh, if you guys don't know, being the Professor is one of the things that I would be as a person in the Pokemon world. So maybe that would be where I'm from um, as well. But I probably would say Viridian because it's not super small, but it also is not a huge city. I know it's called Viridian City, but it's relatively small. And honestly, it's just a really good location. You're right next to the Pokemon League. 
you have a gym in your town you got free health care in the pokemon center in the mart you got everything you want there so uh, i think it's a really cool place and you know pewter's not too far away you can go visit the museum um, you can go south talk to professor do some research down there uh, take a longer trip down on the cinnabar i think it's just a good place overall probably my spot in the main series but if i can go outside i would probably say i would definitely be a gate village in the aura region second question is which pokemon would be in my party oh boy this question is loaded so uh it is so hard i have so many pokemon that i love to put on my team it was difficult for me to think about do i want to build a team that would be competitive do i want to build a team that would uh be my favorite pokemon do i want to build a team that's sort of like diversified or what am i going to do um ultimately i decided on the first six pokemon i thought of when making this video so the first six pokemon that i thought of are going to be the ones they are my some of my favorites some of them are decent competitively some of them are really bad just depends on how you look at it so uh take it with a grain of salt but this would be my team of six so first and foremost i gotta start out with my boy charizard you guys know it was coming you knew it was gonna be here and uh, actually question number three is which pokemon would be your partner pokemon dude exhibit a exhibit b i have charmander everywhere it's literally in my channel mascot as well if you look at my logo the background is like charizard's belly with uh the coloring of its chest it's literally my favorite Pokemon for for variety of reasons. My first Pokemon that I ever obtained, it was my starter Pokemon in Pokemon Fire Red, the first game I ever played. Um, that was Pokemon. Um, it was my first level 100 Pokemon. It was my first Pokemon I pretty much solo ran a game through. First playthrough of Fire Red, I was that typical kid who just picked their starter and went. That was me. Um, I did it with my Charizard. I'm pretty sure um, it was a Charizard by the time I got to Misty's gym. So... <laughs> I kind of over leveled it i really did solo run with my charizard pretty much i had an all fire type team when i first started to um, my friend traded me some like like rapidash and arcanine and those kinds of things that i couldn't get um but i had a whole fire team i think i topped it off even with moltres so you know i switched out uh, i had dugon for surf if i needed to use it but uh charizard's just been with me through, from the very beginning i have a whole video separate video about why I like Charizard. I made it a long time ago, back when the channel was first created. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that down below too, if you want to see a deeper explanation. But Charizard has just been my number one, been with me since the very beginning. And I like to say, I like it before it was cool. So I'm a hipster when it comes to liking Charizard, just saying. Um, although it probably has been liked by everyone since it came out in red, blue, and yellow, and green. Uh, so what am I, I'm behind the party. Uh, we'll move on to my second favorite Pokemon. It's actually a new Pokemon. If you guys have been to my live streams, you definitely know what it is. This is Corviknight. I love the idea of Corviknight. It is such a cool Pokemon. I love its pre-evolutions because they're both flying types. They're pure flying types. We have pure flying types that's not Tornadus and Tornadus Therian. Like, it's really great. I'm so happy they did that. Um, it's just a cool line. Um, Steel typing. Steel has become recently one of my favorite typings. And I'm was this thing came out. I'm like, that's either a dark steel type, a steel flying type. And I'm like, I gotta use this thing. And trust me, I used Skarmory for a while because I, you know, like the steel. Apparently, I'm a flying type person um, as well. But just this thing is incredible. It is powerful. It does wonders in Galar. If you've never used one on a team, try to play through a game. Try to do a, like a let's play of it using a Corviknight because it does well against pretty much every gym. So, yeah. I mean, maybe not so well against the, the flying and rock, but it's a steel type, so it does well. Okay? It's, it's good. It's good. It's beautiful. But Corviknight has slowly become one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, like, I saw, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, this is the Pokemon from Generation 7 that's going to be my favorite. And, dude, it's so close. Like, it is such a close second to Charizard that nothing else ever compared to, like, when I made my first top 10 Pokemon list, um, Corviknight wasn't out yet. It wasn't revealed. We weren't even sure of Generation 8 yet, anything about it. But it's just, it's a metal, edgy bird. How can you not like that? Like, it's just perfect. It's so good. It's, my, it's definitely my favorite Pokemon from Galar. Very close second to Charizard on my favorite team. Um, and it's, it's really great. 
So we'll move back on into the Kanto again. If you guys, as I say, I'm not a Gen 1-er. I like to claim that I'm a Gen 3-er, if anything, because Fire Red, Emerald were my first two games, and I played Ore, both Coliseum and XD, endlessly. So I'm very much ingrained in Generation 3. If anything, I like Gen 3 more than anything. So um, don't call me Gen 1-er. <laughs> I've never been accused of that yet, but it's going to happen someday. But going back to Kanto, I got to pick up... Um, Something that was actually on Sui's list as well, an Evolution, and I'm going back and grabbing Vaporeon. If you guys don't know the story about Vaporeon, Vaporeon became my second favorite Pokemon back in X and Y when I used it on my first team. It was one of my first videos was the X and Y team I broke down that I used to play the game. Um, I used it in that for my first ever competitive battle that wasn't with one of my siblings, and it ended up um, coming back from a 6-1 deficit to win me the entire match. I don't know how I won that. My opponent really sucked. I had two water moves, Ice Beam, and uh, an Aqua Ring for some reason. But I ended up winning. I don't know how. That guy had to be bad. Sorry if you're watching this, but you had to be bad. Like, that was terrible. I don't know how Vaporeon won that, but it did. And it became my favorite Pokemon since then. Um, it's a really awesome, uh, tanky Pokemon. The Evolutions have such a great stat distribution. And I think Vaporeon's is really nice for a defensive water type. It is such a good, good typing for such good for the stats to match it. And it's just incredible. It's, it doesn't have great move set, doesn't have a great move pool. It's not the best Pokemon, but you know, it just it's just so awesome to me. And I remember having um, if you guys remember the TCG cards, they had like the light and dark Pokemon. I had a dark Vaporeon, and I love that art. It's my favorite art of uh, TCG of all time. Uh, maybe maybe even more than the rare Charizard. I would probably go that far and say that. But Vaporeon just has had a special place in my heart from that moment on. It was my second favorite Pokemon until Corviknight came along. It's still really high up there, probably in my top three still. And uh, I just couldn't imagine doing this team without Vaporeon. Speaking of things I couldn't do this team without, next up from Kanto again is Butterfree. You guys know I love Butterfree. It is the only Pokemon I've done on a stream, um, not on, on face cam, on, on video form for you guys that I've done a solo run of. Uh, I did a solo run of Fire Red Leaf Green with just a Butterfree. And man, Urphiturb is such a cool Pokemon. Uh, I remember the Bye Bye Butterfree episode as one of the saddest moments I've ever seen in, in any film. Um, the moment still gets to me even i'll admit that like bye bye butterfree still gets me can't watch it <laughs> it makes me sad but i i love butterfree i loved ash's butterfree um i really like the pink one too i think it's really cool um i'm a little sad that it's not a bug psychic type i really think it should be so mega evolution retyping stat buff i don't know make make butterfree great again i don't know i probably should have said that but uh, Butterfree is just really cool. Uh, it's one of my favorite. It's my favorite bug type. It's my third favorite flying type. I get, if you can guess what number one and two is, good for you. I'll give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Uh, you should know what they are. I've already mentioned them in this video. But Butterfree is just a solid Pokemon. Uh, I love Quiver Dance. I love how it's actually in the competitive scene in Sword and Shield uh, with G Max form. It's so awesome to see Butterfree doing some work. And man, it's just a really cool Pokemon in general and i remember like it being like really good against brock despite it being four times weak to him <laughs> like it was really great uh, because you could just like confusion and he would die because onyx and Geodude don't have special defense stats so it's great i'll move on then uh moving on to number five uh, this is really not a surprise to anybody um I've had so much fun using this Pokemon. It is a staple for any time I throw through Hoenn, and that is Gardevoir. It has such an amazing shiny, especially in its mega form. It has such an awesome um, evolutionary line. I mean, Ralts isn't that great, but it's kind of, you know, you're, you're hideaway, like shy person, and then Krillia is just like, I'm here. I'm kind of, you know, cutesy. And then Gardevoir comes and is like, BAM! I'm taking center stage, I'm kicking your face in, because I'm powerful. It is like one of the only fairy types I actually like, which is saying something because I don't like fairy types at all. Um, but Gardevoir being my favorite Pokemon, it was my favorite Pokemon when it was a psychic type. Um, so, you know, I had to overlook the fairy of it, but I have to add it to the team. I think this adds type diversity to my team, which is really nice. 
Um, but Gardevoir just has an amazing moveset. Um, he's got nice ability, Synchronize, um, Trace. Just a phenomenal Pokemon. Shout out to the uh, PDL video where I did Trace Gardevoir, Trace Multiscale on Tubi's Dragonite and Swept. Like, that was a fun battle. I love doing that. It was one of my favorite moments with Gardevoir. So thank you for giving me that too. Appreciate that. Uh, but it's just a really cool Pokemon. And I don't care if everyone's just like rule 34 waifu crap and like get that out of here. That no, it's just a, it's a solid Pokemon, dude. Like every ever have you ever tried to use a Gardevoir? It's does everything you need it to. Has coverage for everything. Like it's per it's, it's perfect. Pretty much. It's like the best psychic type and fairy type out there, period. In my opinion. But it's my opinion. And last but not least, I had to go with something that um, really stood out to me. Just thinking about it. I, as I said, I went with the top six, the first six Pokemon I thought of. Obviously, the first five were really easy because those are my five favorite Pokemon. Um, at least up there in my top ten. I'm not sure if they're quite the top five, but they're definitely the top ten of my favorite Pokemon. Um, but I had to think. There's so many things I could fit in this slot. I thought Wingle um, could fit here because of my... my uh, PDL team, the Detroit Red Wingles, my draft league team, um, but I ultimately didn't decide with that because I do like Wingle. Wingle is um, one of my favorite Pokemon out there, especially in Gen 3, but I, I didn't really want to go with that. I didn't feel like Wingle would be something I would carry. Maybe it would be something I would have, like uh, Mr. Briny has Pico. Maybe that would be what it was. Maybe that's what I have it. It just follows me around, not all, actually on my team, but just follows me around. Um, another thought that came to mind was Gastrodon. I really love Gastrodon. It's my favorite Generation 4 Pokemon. Despite Garchomp being in that gen, despite Luxray, despite Staraptor, despite Infernate, dude. This little Slee Slug that's absolutely a tank is my favorite Pokemon from, from Sinnoh. And if you ask anybody, like, if you're like, give me a Sinnoh team, I include Gastrodon every single time. I will say, make sure it's East Coast. Gastrodon because East Coast Gastrodons my first draft league team cannot deny that uh, but ultimately I didn't go with Gastrodon um, I thought it's four times weakness to grass was really not helpful on my team of flying types <laughs> I'm just kidding uh, Gastrodon is really cool it just I didn't think I wanted to use it in this list I had to th find something that I really connected with for this final slot I have great stories with all the rest of the five of the team I had to have a great story with this last Mon. And honestly, it was really hard to come up with just one Pokemon that fit this bill. As I said, I had a few thoughts going through my mind about what would fill this final slot of my team, and I just didn't know. And then I thought back to some of my recent playthroughs. Um, and if you guys remember, um, I just actually finished the uh, Sun Invisible Corporation Stunts Lock on the Twitch channel. Uh, I haven't finished it on YouTube yet, so if you want to watch that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, check it out. Um, but I did remember while playing through the game and uh, battling the champion, I remembered that I had a Pokemon that actually swept the champion for me and was a big MVP of my first Sun team. And that Pokemon was Passimian. I really love this thing. Um, fighting types are something I've always liked as well. I've always considered myself more of a psychic kind of guy because I generally prefer brains over brawn. But I think Passimian really makes an argument here. It is fast. It is offensive, and I know you might be like, it's not fast chaos. Give it a choice scarf. Yeah. Tell me that thing doesn't wreck shop. Tell me it doesn't. It has such great coverage moves. It has an awesome ability. It's based off of sports, which I really do like, especially football, which, you know, looks like it's hiking a ball like a center would in football. Uh, it's just a really interesting Pokemon, and I, I just remember going through, um, Going through Sun, battling the champion, and I had something for every single member of his team that he brought out. And I swept through the champion with just a Passimian that wasn't even over leveled. It was actually awesome, and it just really holds a place in my heart. I'm really wanting to use it again. Um, I wanted to use it in, you know, Gen 8. I haven't done it yet. Maybe the next time I play through Galar, I'll have to throw it on my team somewhere. Uh, maybe I'll just do a favorites run through with Galar because I'd have to do it with Corviknight, obviously, as one of my favorites. But, you know, I'd love to use it again. I think it's a really awesome Pokemon. I always cower when I see one because, dude, Choice Band, Choice Scarf, it's going to have a Choice Item. It's going to destroy you. It's going to suck. You got to deal with it. Bro, this thing is power and I love it. It's so much fun. Uh, and I definitely recommend trying out Passimian, dude. It's a great Pokemon. I love it. 
Uh, I kind of have a thing for monkey monkey Pokemon. I mean, maybe not the... I mean, I'll even say the elemental monkeys. They're not terrible. I can see you typing my, in the comment section. I, trust me, I still don't like them. But they're not terrible. They get too much hate, in my opinion. Okay, this is not the place to make that argument. Let's go. Let's keep moving on. So that would be my team. Again, the team of six. Charizard, Butterfree, Vaporeon, Corviknight, Gardevoir, and rounding off with Pissimian. That would be my team of six. And as I say with question number three, which Pokemon is my partner Pokemon? Can you guess? It's definitely Charizard. It's my boy. It's my uh, mascot. It's my MVP all the time. Love me some Charizard. So there's one the final thing to do with this video. That was the three questions. Uh, I again, will link them in the description down below. I will say them one more time for you, just so you know. Number one, if Pokemon was real, which town or city would you be from? Um, feel free to replace that with region if you don't really have a town or city, but try to make a town or city if you can. Um, number two, which Pokemon would be in your party that is limiting you to six? Do not be like Tui and keep cycling through Pokemon depending on the situation. You only get six, so choose them wisely. It's a really tough choice, but you know, it's really cool. It's really interesting to do and delve into yourself to figure that out. And then number three, which Pokemon would be your partner Pokemon? Now, obviously, it's easier to answer three before two, as I kind of did with Charizard. But, you know, if you can make it, you flip it around, feel free to do that. Um, again, I was tagged by Soy Salamon. Sir, thank you so much, my guy, for putting me into this. I had a lot of fun making this video. And just thinking about my team, uh, all the things about Pokemon that I love and really wanted to get into this. So, my final thing to do is I got to tag some people. And I thought of three awesome guys to do it. I would say I was going to tag uh, Jimmy and No Leaks Louie, uh, Jimmy Tortuga and No Leaks Louie. Um, sadly, Soy already tagged them, so I'm not going to re-tag them, but go check out their videos too. Um, definitely want to see them. But I'm also I'm going to tag my friends uh, from the Invisible Corporations. If you guys don't know, it's the second channel I work on where I do non-Pokemon related content. But a lot of the guys there have done Pokemon as well. So I want to tag my Invisible Corporations friends. Um, feel free to check them all out. Um, but in particular, I'm going to tag 2e5. If you want to make it more 2e5 video, make it a more 2e5 video. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to tag Damien Dragon, my good friend Damien, uh, all the way back from Frustling Tube. Same with 2e. And then I'm going to tag uh, one of the first people I ever worked on a collaborative project with, and that would be Tech at Beasting. So. Make sure you go check them out. Tui, Tech It, Damien, I expect to see your video. So, do it. <laughs> but that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Again, if you did like this video, feel free to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss more content from me. As I said, I got about three Let's Plays going on right now. I got videos every Saturday. I got some competitive. I got a little bit of everything with Pokemon coming up. Make sure you check it out. Uh, and definitely go check out the Twitch channel for more content from me. Uh, I will link uh, Tui's, Damien's, and Tekkit's video in the description down below once they have posted them. I'll also probably give you Soy's video, as I already said, and then Jimmy and um, Louie's video once they come out. So definitely go check out all those in the description down below. You got some content to watch. Happy, happy quarantine. Enjoy. <laughs> um, but also, make sure you guys check out Invisible Corporations. I really do appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. Feel free, as well, if you weren't tagged by me, if you're watching this, if you want to do it, do it. Just make a video, do it. If you want to leave it in the comment section, fine by me too. But make sure you just let me know. I want to see it. And then if you do make a video, please either tweet at me, uh, DM me on Discord, put it in the Discord, send it to me on the Discord server. Um, just let me know that you've made a video and I will definitely go check it out. But uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Sorry this video went a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Thank you for watching the tag video, uh, the trainer team tag 2020. I appreciate you guys checking this out. I'll see you guys next time for more content. But until then, my name is Chaos and I'm signing off. Stay safe and as always, burn it up. <laughs>